Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Ash and I'm going to facilitate a Google Site eBinder presentation for you. It is just going to be an overview. In fact, today it's going to be the Cliff Notes version, a shortened version of what I had planned to do um, a few days ago. So yes, the other day I had some technical problems. My laptop decided to do a critical update and my audience was so professional and understanding and I'm so proud that they went back and looked at some of the resources on Google Classroom so if you did make sure you go back and look at the Google site eBinder slideshow and definitely the last one entitled eBinder training pre-planning agenda that would be very helpful now we have several experts at our school who are a good resource if you ever need help on it. Um, but I want to also encourage you to look at my eBinder as a model, as an example, and look at some of the units that I have for social studies uh, to get ideas on what you can incorporate in your eBinder. Your student's eBinder might not look like yours. Um, definitely encourage creativity but uh, here is a starting point. Now if you have never set up your eBinder or if a student has not set up uh, their eBinder you can refer to a folder that has a copy of the template. So I'm going to show you where that is. Uh, here's a link to the folder but I'm going to go to the one that I have online and open up this folder TMS eBinder folder and when I open it up I have a copy of the portfolio eBinder. Don't open it, rather right click it and make a copy. Right click make a copy and it'll be saved to your Google Drive. Again those instructions are just for the new teachers or new students to the eBinder it will be in your recent files on Google Drive so check there you might want to go ahead and star it so that you can locate it rather quickly also when you open up your eBinder I have mine open as an example go ahead to your address bar and star it so that you can locate it quickly it'll be bookmarked to your favorites and you can just click that to access it very quickly encourage your students to do the same now once you have bookmarked it you are welcome to change the name in the top left corner right here and right here and you can change the images as necessary too but I will definitely want everyone I need everyone to come here and watch these two videos at your leisure it's called the student demo and also publishing the eBinder site if you can start that video at the 1 minute 30 second mark and watch 3 minutes worth of it and then of course the second one is only 2 minutes. It is key that you follow those directions so that your page is active and you won't get any error messages about it not being found. But that just shows you how to publish it correctly. Now let's come back to the slideshow there are a few slides that I want to emphasize that you go back and review um, right now I'm on slide six about the misconceptions but definitely I want you to go down to slide um, 11 make sure you look at 11 there is an eBinder reference page at your leisure we put together a few videos that may help you uh, I suggest you just pay attention to what's in the chart at the top Another slide I want you to look at is slide 13. All right, these are some examples, and of course, you can look at uh, my example at any time. Look at some of these students from last year. Another slide I want you to look at are the screenshots. Slide 15. Uh, let me make that a little bigger for you. Uh, slide 15 through 19, which are screenshots of the layout, tells you what they do so I'm just gonna go quickly through it this is a very key page um, that you'll find will help you when you are adding information so definitely look at all the screenshot pages too 
uh, within the first two weeks of school, make sure all your students have an e-binder established and that we know how to use some of these uh, menus. Look at slides uh, 23 and 24 also. It just talks about best practices and, uh oh, best practices and success tips, okay? Things that um, some of us learn the hard way, but you won't have any issues. Now, once you're ready to get a list of all your students' e binders for quick access, I encourage you to make a copy of this particular document I have included for you. So um, let me show you how that will work. I'm going to uh, scroll down to page two. And what you'll do, of course, you will have your own copy. You'll make a copy of this file, make a copy, and of course, you can rename it and save it to your Google Drive. But you want to share a document like this for your entire class. This may take three to five minutes. What you'll do, you'll share it, open it up, put it all on, um, give everybody editing rights to view it and to make changes. So change it from viewer, let me move that, change it from viewer to editor so that they can update their links on your page. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. Um, let me go to my, let's pretend this is their eBinder. It's already published, it's already active. Um, you decide what page you want them to copy for you. And once they are on that particular page, you will have them click on this button that says copy publish site link at the top right corner copy publish site they'll grab that link and on your form have them type your uh, their name or if you want to go ahead and type in all their names that's up to you and I'm gonna demonstrate with this student one how they'll tell your students to highlight their name and choose the hyperlink button and then they can just paste it, paste that link right there. So uh, you'll have access to everybody's uh, eBinder without them sharing it with you. And you can just uh, take that document. Once you get all your students there, I would advise you to take it off of editing and mode and put it back on viewer only mode because you don't want the kids to mess that up. And that is a one-time thing you would do to have all your students' e-binders in one location. Uh, I want to show you an example. Here's mine from last year. All right. All these links work. I wanted certain pages uh, linked, so I just put their names, and they hyperlinked it right here. So that's an example of what it should look like. And if I need to check somebody's, I'll come here. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't check all of them. I check, uh, I check most of them through a glance by walking around the classroom and looking at it that way. Now for this next section, I want to show you and emphasize uh, publishing. Publishing. Uh, whenever you make changes, to save those changes, you publish it right here in the top right corner. But let me uh, show you a couple items we learned at the beginning of last year. Uh, when you publish the very first time, it's going to ask you to type in a web address. So if you're a new teacher or a new student that is uh, setting it up and you're publishing it for the very first time, type in an appropriate web address on what you want it to represent. And then publish and save. Okay? I've already done that. Another thing I want to show you is everyone. Everyone, whether you're new or a veteran to the eBinder, please verify with this button. Share with people. Share with people. So let me come back up here to the share with people button. Share with others, it says. And I'm going to click it. I need everyone to do this. Everyone. Come down to the bottom where it says links. Click on change. All right. It is OK for your Douglas uh, County one to say draft. Your draft should stay on Douglas County. But uh, students, by default, it is probably restricted. So please take it off of restricted 
and put it on either Douglas County or public. I put mine on public because I have um, outsiders like parents who uh, I want them to view it. But if you just want to keep it on Douglas County, that is your option. But definitely, number one, take it off a restricted and put it on one of these two. It, let me tell you why that's important. When your students get ready to copy their link, remember this button, when they get ready to copy their published site link, you will not be able to see it if it is restricted. So that's just a little uh, troubleshooting step. Make sure you go to share with me, share with others, take it off a of restricted and put it on public or Douglas County Schools. Please take some time to get to know these menus. Look at slide 17 on the slideshow that I provided. Um, and uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Click and experiment. You cannot mess it up. There's an undo button. There's a preview button. All right. The publish button. But one of the most important items that you're going to use on the eBinder Google site, because that's what it is. An eBinder is not the more than a site. In fact, our curriculum and instruction page that we visit monthly or weekly. People, it's a Google site. So this is the Google will that you will likely use a lot. So get to know this menu and I'm going to demonstrate a couple items in the next section. Now I'm on my practice page of my eBinder to show you a few um, ways to add different content. I'm on the pages menu. I've already added a page and if whenever you want to add a page just hit that little plus button in the top, I'm sorry not top, the bottom right corner and you can add a page. Give it a title. If you don't like where it is you can click and drag it to different parts of the menu. If you want to hide it, you can hide it by clicking these three dots on the right. You can make it your home page. Don't do that though. Uh, duplicate a page, which means to make a copy if you don't want to redo everything that's kind of outlined on one page. Duplicate it and then uh, modify it. And of course, if you want to hide it, it doesn't delete anything. It just hides it from the navigation. So if you want to keep something secret from your students, all right, because they have a uh, pretest coming up, just just go ahead and hide it temporarily, okay? Now let's take a few moments and uh, let's look at the Google Will. Now, when you go to the blank space of your Google page, just double click, double click, and this will will come up. Double click in the will. Let's go over some of the tools. You can add pictures. So I add, I can just click that button at the top. And these are the options to add pictures. Of course, anything you add, you can go and resize and make it fit and make it look beautiful and well designed. The other one is uh, the upload. If you have something on your computer that you want to put up, you choose the upload button located in your on your computer menu. All right, that was upload. So we went over images and upload. The other one is embed. You might want to do this every now and then. Embed like a YouTube video. I think many teachers use YouTube or, um, videos. So you can copy and paste that uh, link right here. And it will be on your page. I'll show you some examples in a minute. Um, of course, if you want to put text, just hit the text button. I'm just going to type in, let me type in the word Google eBinder. Whatever you put in as a text, of course, you can resize that, play around with these. But um, encourage your students to also make hyperlinks by copying and pasting the text and then coming to the three dots and choosing the link. So if I chose the word, uh oh, I'm in the way. Let me move that out the way. So if I chose uh, to put in Google, of course, you can copy and paste. I can just um, make it hyperlinked. Notice that it's underlined and it is now a link. I click on it, I see where it will go. Play around with the Google Wheel and uh, insert some items from your drive. So if the students have items that they recently have been to on Google Classroom, it will appear under their recent. 
and I have went ahead and attached two files that I recently went to and attached it here. Remember to complete your Kami summary.